Vermintide has three main DLC expansions. You'd be hard pressed to find someone who doesn't like Back to Ubersreich and Shadows over Burgerhoppen, since they are universally accepted by most of the player base and are all around solid expansions. Winds of Magic, on the other hand, is a mixed bag, as some will say it's worth it, while others will tell you to avoid it as if Papa Nurgle himself touched the DLC. In today's episode of Vermin Talk, we're going to discuss why Winds of Magic was so poorly received, if there is any merit to the complaints regarding it, and if those merits still hold up today. Winds of Magic was released to the public on August 19th, 2019 to an overwhelmingly negative reception from the entire community. But to begin to understand why this is, we first must go back further in time to the summer of that same year. On June 11th, the official Winds of Magic beta was opened to those who received an invitation via email to partake in it. The beta was advertised as a way to playtest the new content that the DLC would offer, as this was the largest expansion that Fatshark had ever created for Vermintide, and they understandably needed some help in the balance aspect of it. In this beta, players of all skill levels got the opportunity to test the five new weapons that were created, play the new game mode of Weaves, play against the new enemy faction of Beastmen, and jump into the new Cataclysm difficulty, something which players of the first Vermintide had long been awaiting. The first issue that arose was the idea of Cataclysm being locked behind paid DLC. Cataclysm was a staple game mode in the first Vermintide game, and choosing to force players to pay for it instead of releasing it for free like it was in the first game left many with a bad taste in their mouths from the start. They said that locking a difficulty behind a paywall would limit the player base and force the Cataclysm community to be much smaller than it could actually be, but this criticism fell on deaf ears and nothing was changed. After this, people took notice of Beastmen. The hype that was associated with the introduction of a new faction quickly dwindled, as it became clear Beastmen were unfinished and unbalanced. They had the numbers of Skaven, yet had more strength than the Chaos Hordes, doing immense damage in just a single hit and having a large amount of stagger resistance to boot. Spearmen frequently would stand in the back of the Horde and stab you through the Horde, getting free damage on you while you could do nothing in return. If you did reach them, they would dodge your attacks by backstepping back into the Horde of Beastmen, a unique and interesting dodge mechanic, but poorly implemented that did nothing but frustrate the player. Archers were not differently colored and blended into the normal horde easily and could not be pinged, making them hard to target. They were much harder to dodge, and their arrows were not blockable by blocking by any weapon. Mixing this with arrows force dropping your block after being shot made for a recipe for disaster. Standard bearers' flags were only able to be destroyed through melee attacks and had no hard cap for how many could spawn at once. Beastmen in a tight tunnel were a death sentence already, but throw in four banners and it was a guaranteed wipe. The Minotaur never made an appearance in the beta either, disappointing many and blocking the community from giving feedback on the boss as well. All of these issues were present in the beta for Winds of Magic, but this wasn't the main issue. The main issue was, once again, all of these criticisms and feedback fell on deaf ears, and nothing was changed. Weaves were designed to be a challenging game mode for more experienced players to compete with each other on the leaderboards, yet the issue was that the difficulty of weaves scaled very high very quickly, so much so that certain weaves were impossible to beat without looking for a way to exploit the game in your favor. The Athenor system for leveling up items was a good idea on paper, but since there was no other way to gain Athenor at the time other than playing weaves, it eventually got to the point where you would have to attempt and most likely fail the same weave over and over again just to get enough Athenor to stand a chance at eventually beating it. Fatshark also said Athenor would reset every season of weaves, making it so that all the grinding was wasted time in the end. To their credit, the Athenor system was changed by launch so that it would not reset on seasons, and the difficulty was scaled down slightly in weaves, but otherwise, nothing was changed. To put it into perspective, this is Party Knife's experience with Season 1 of Weaves, which he describes as the worst experience of his life in Vermintide. The most controversial aspect regarding Winds of Magic, however, wasn't necessarily something that was part of the DLC itself, but was lumped in as part of the Winds of Magic since this change just so happened to also be pushed during the beta. It was at this point the staggered changes in talents were introduced, causing a massive uproar from the community. 
Prior to these changes, enemies took full damage from all attacks and dodging made you completely invulnerable during the entire dodge duration, making the game significantly easier. The stagger system was created to combat this, giving enemies passive damage resistance and making them more vulnerable based upon how much an enemy had been staggered. At its introduction, the system was far too heavily overtuned, making enemies impossible to stagger and giving them massive damage resistance which made hordes take multiple minutes to kill, halting Vermintide's fast-paced gameplay to a slog. The stagger system was one of the few things Fat Shark changed in the beta and to their credit did make it better, but by then it was too late. The damage had already been done. When the DLC was officially launched on August 19th, everyone saw that virtually no changes were made from the beta. Old and new bugs were present, many of them quite severe and game-breaking. Most notably was animation desync, causing every enemy to hit you sooner than what their animation actually showed. The introduction of the Minotaur and its frustrating attack pattern was the final nail in the coffin for many, causing many to leave the community and never return. Many of these issues were eventually fixed, but it took far too long to do so, causing Winds of Magic and its release to be forever remembered as a failed expansion. The reason you probably clicked on this video, though, is because you're wondering if you should purchase Winds of Magic now in 2021. Most, if not all, of the bugs and crashes related to Winds of Magic have been patched in by now, and the stagger system and Beastmen have been tuned to be less frustrating and more fun overall. However, as of today, Beastmen are still buggy in their animations and do more damage than Chaos, which can easily make them a very frustrating faction to go against. Weaves as a whole are still unfun, and later Weaves still demand you cheese the game in order to win, and as of now, there appears to be no plans to change this in the future. Cataclysm difficulty offers an additional challenge for those who wish to challenge themselves for the fun of it, but offer no better rewards than Legend does, and the five new weapons added are cool, but none of them, in my opinion, are absolute must-haves like the Back to Uberzreich weapons are. Because of this, I would recommend purchasing Winds of Magic on a sale if you believe you could get many hours of fun out of Cataclysm and you believe you would really enjoy using the new weapons the DLC adds. Otherwise, you won't miss out anything on skipping the DLC. I would also like to make a disclaimer that Fat Shark back in 2019 is not the same Fat Shark in 2021. They have since learned from their mistakes and are doing their best to not repeat what happened to Winds of Magic, and I personally have full faith that they will make Chaos Wastes as well as their future endeavors in Vermintide and Darktide the best that it can be. Thanks for watching.